We've got M. Sarge is hanging around here. We've got Bob Yes, good to have you back with us. And Fluffy Cheeseburger is here. Um, M. Sarge, Fluffy Cheeseburger, members of the family always show up on my stream. Good to support um, the lady in their life, especially the one that cooks a lot for them. Sure, it's the store. It is the store. Look, I can do it on command. See, it's definitely the store. So you're going to be seeing a lot of this today. Forced labour, that's right. You're going to be seeing a lot of this today, the glasses. My eyes did not want to wear the contacts today. So I am in a no contact wearing zone. First things first, let's get the hands washed. Today we're going to be cooking another recipe from my Kai box, which is the vegan um, home delivery food recipe service that we have here in New Zealand. And what was that that just pinged up? 9.9. .9. Oh, thank you for the sub. Welcome aboard again. Good to see you back. Um, as I was just saying, um, put my kettle on because I've got to have my cup of tea, strawberry and rhubarb. The Kai box is what I'm cooking this week. Um, and today we've got a green Thai curry, which I'm looking forward to. Once again, it's a vegan recipe. Um, just about all of the ingredients come in the cook box apart from um, some kind of pantry staple items that we have. Um, let's have a little chat about the last, that's right, Kai is a Maori word which means food. And in New Zealand, um, Maori is the, the native language of which I do not speak, only know a few words. Oh, this is why you woke up. Oh, bless your heart. That's so sweet of you. Woke up just for me. Right, so last time I made this baked portobellos on mash. Now, you should be able to find um, this online. Um, certainly on my uh, homepage, you should be able to find the cook that I did two nights ago. Um, once again, with these food bags that we get for home delivery, we have found that um, my Kai box, we've had my food bag, oh, let me get in the camera, we've had my food bag and we've had bargain box um, and now we're just trying my Kai box for the first time this week. We found that these meals actually go much, make your puku big, this is your puku, yeah, and I've gained a couple of kilos since I've been um, eating too much food during lockdown. Um, I found that these meals go way further. So we order the box for two people, two adults, um, and for four nights a week. And we're finding that the meals we can split in half and there's more than enough to feed us um, for two nights. So whereas the box should last for four nights in total, it's actually lasting eight nights. So I'm getting a, a night off each time. I have a cook and then I get a night off and then I get a cook again. Puku. Puku is your stomach. So if you eat too much, your puku gets too big. Puku is the Maori word for stomach. Right. So yeah, baked portobellos on mash. Um, Fluffy Cheeseburger, you're online and you um, got to indulge in this wondrous recipe um, last night and the night before. Um, I've got up here a C and an L, so I scored it a 9 out of 10. 6 out of 10, do you still give it a 6 out of 10 fluffy cheeseburger? I so enjoyed this, this meal, I really, really did. Portobello mushrooms are what we used, you still give it a 6 out of 10, that's fine. Um, definitely something, it was just meh, <laughs> so hard to please this one. Hopefully we'll do better tonight um, with the green Thai curry, one of his favourite things. Um, baked portobellos on mash. I'll definitely make that recipe again. I really enjoyed it. I don't know if I'd go out and buy the portobellos because they're so much more expensive down here in New Zealand. Um, but I did enjoy the meal, so I'd probably just use a regular button mushroom next time around. So this is what we're making today. The green Thai curry, called lockdown green Thai curry, because we are still in lockdown here in New Zealand for the COVID-9 outbreak. Um, but we're making headway. I have to say, I am so impressed with our um, ministerial leader that we have here in New Zealand at the moment. Um, she has been amazing. She has brought restrictions into the country against a lot of criticism at the beginning, but what she has done has been the right thing. Um, yes, mushrooms are good in a strong enough. 
Um, she locked us down very, very quickly. We went from alert level t two to alert level four within the space of 48 hours. Yes, Jacinda is doing a fantastic job. Um, our infection rate has dropped off rapidly after an initial peak after a few days. Um, it has dropped down rapidly. We're now just over two weeks into this. Um, oh, good. I'm glad you're going to be able to hang around, Bob. Yes, that's awesome. Um, it's, yeah, the, the, after the first few days, our percentage of new infections started dropping. Um, and I think we've just, as of today or as of tomorrow, anybody that enters the country will automatically be quarantined. This isn't a by choice. This isn't a travel to your home and be locked down for two weeks. You're going to be quarantined in a, in a hotel. Um, I think Auckland at the moment is the only place that you can fly into internationally. Um, and you're going to be locked up in a hotel for two weeks. And I think it might be at government expense. But um, yeah, it's, it's what needs to be done for the country. Um, it's our next progression step so we can get out of lockdown at that four week mark if we possibly can. There's always a chance that we may have to extend. Um, with Easter coming upon us, we've got the risk that there will be some Muppets or entitled people who feel the rules don't apply to them that will break the lockdown um, process, I'm sure. And so we could potentially expect to see an increase in the number of infections within the next couple of weeks again as it's um, those bubbles that are joining together that shouldn't be joining, up, joining together, people that are heading off towards their holiday homes or batches as they're known here in New Zealand. Um, who really should be staying put. Um, we've got lots of police out on the roads, um, lots of police checkpoints, and that's going to be stepped up as this Easter weekend comes upon us in the hope of encouraging people to stay at home. Uh, so that's what you need to do. It's not a hard thing to do. I know everybody's gone a little cabin crazy, a little stir crazy, but just please stay the F at home. Mum has spoken. There you go. Right, so... Let me have a look. Oh, sorry. Strawberry rhubarb tea. Red seal tea. I wish you could smell this tea. It's just delicious. So, green Thai curry. That's right. Stay the F at home. Green Thai curry is what we're going to be making today. The majority of these ingredients came in my Kai box that I had ordered, and I think I'm going to be ordering this again. So for the recipe, we need a half a red onion. So there is my red onion that came in the Kai box. One tablespoon of green Thai curry paste. That came in my um, box as well. And I've got some leftover green Thai curry paste from a curry I made um, a few days ago. So if that's still good, I'll probably dump that into here as well. One to two garlic cloves. I never stick to one to two measure when it comes to garlic. I've got three garlic cloves here. One of those is a beauty. Look at the size of that. A whopper of a garlic clove. Ginger, my ginger, I, I heard the other day it's a good idea to put your ginger into the freezer, keep it frozen, and when you're ready to use it, literally grate it from frozen, skin as well, it's all fibre, it's not going to hurt you, um, but it's easier to grate apparently when it's frozen, so mine is in the freezer at the moment. One tin of coconut cream, there's coconut cream. One broccoli cut into florets, there's my broccoli that came from... I'm going to salvage this bag and untie that knot because I can use this as a rubbish bag later. So a beautiful head of broccoli which came in the Kai box. Look at that. Just gorgeous. Uh, one courgette. Well, I forget, forgot to get my courgette out. Let me go grab that. Great way to keep your, your carrots and your courgettes, peeps. Take, get yourself a sealable plastic tub, put a paper towel in the bottom, and that's where you put your carrots and your courgettes. Good way to keep them nice and fresh and stop that bendy carrot problem that you get if you just throw it straight into your refrigerator. Okay, so there's my courgette. Um, one carrot, I had some spare carrots, so I'm going to be using two carrots today. <laughs> yeah, sorry, tin equals can, sorry. One tin, one can. Uh, there's my carrots. I'm going to use two of them, cut that into diagonal slices. I have to remember that. One cup of edamame beans. I've never, this, is, this came with the uh, ingredients as well. I've never 
tried edamame beans before and I've just eaten one raw, a couple raw actually. Oh, I guess they've been cooked and then cooled, but they're actually rather nice. They're kind of like a, maybe they haven't been cooked, but like a pea. So this is the first time I've used edamame beans and I'm definitely going to get them again because I can happily snack on those. There are a few ingredients that need to come from your pantry staples, of which was a tablespoon of rice vinegar. Rice vinegar? Rice vinegar. I don't have any rice vinegar. So I'm going to just use regular old white wine vinegar. I'm sure that'll be fine. A tablespoon of soy sauce, again, from my pantry. So I've got my lovely soy style thick sauce here, which I enjoy, so we'll be using that. One tablespoon of brown sugar or maple syrup. So last week we had my food bag and I have some leftover maple syrup from that. So that's what I'm going to be using. Um, a kaffir lime leaf. That came in the boxes last day, provides just about everything that you need. So I've got a lime leaf there. Um, a small handful of coriander. Now I won't be adding this to the main part of the recipe. Number one son does not like coriander, so I'll chop that up and I shall have it on the side. Um, one lime, nice little lime they sent me. And three quarters of a cup of brown rice. So there's a small bag of brown rice there. I don't know how much is inside of it. 143 grams. I don't know if that's three quarters of a cup, but I'll, I'll um, probably cook up everything that I have here. So first things first, hands have been washed. Mum's apron is on. Cup of tea is ready. Must sharpen my knife. Oh, always. Take your recipe, put it into one of these. I've got a um, pocket protector here. Put it in, or document protector you might call it. Put it inside one of these. Um, inevitably, you're gonna splatter and make a mess and this helps protect your recipe. Um, I'm so glad I protected this little book that came with it. It's a little recipe book that comes with all the, um, a list of the ingredients that we get and, and the recipes inside and that came as part of this um, food box, this Kai box that we got this time around. I'm so glad I protected that recipe because um, I'm definitely going to be making that portobello mushroom recipe again. So I'm going to sharpen my knife, do this just to keep the husband happy. Always rinse your knife off or wipe your knife off you don't want those little metal filings getting into your food. Right, what do we need to do today? Half a red onion. You know, shall I get this rice ready to start with? Let me see how much we've got here so I can figure out how much water I need to add. This is quite a quick cook for today. It says the prep time is 10 minutes, the cook time is 30 minutes. So. Oh dear, where's my scissors? Chop my way into that. So maybe I'll just get everything prepped and then I'll pull, do the cook together rather than splitting it up. Yeah, so there's about three quarters of a cup of rice here. They have measured it out accurately. So three quarters of a cup is 143 grams, roughly. Get the last little grain of rice out there. It's empty. Please recycle. Um, I'm not certain our council is actually recycling at the moment, but um, I'm going to still try to recycle. And that's once again, it's all to do with the COVID lockdown, but I've still got my recycling bin going out. All right, it says in here, in a small pot, add the rice along with one and a half cups of water and then bring to the boil. So I'm not going to bring it to the boil yet. I'm just going to get this ready to go. When she's ready, she's ready. One to two garlic cloves. So as I said, I'm going to use all three that I got here. 
we'll just get all these veggies ready to go. So top and tail your garlic, as I mentioned before. And then just give them a squish and that helps, that's it, smash it. That helps pop the skin. So you can just peel the skin off after that. See how easy that peels away? This is a huge bulb. Oh, what's it called? An ear, isn't it? Huge ear of garlic. Yum. And I still haven't found my garlic mincer. I've got one somewhere, but I need to take the time out to dig it out, find it. So we're going to cut this, dice it up nice and small. So what have you guys been up to? How's your day been so far? Or are you much like m -Sage and now just getting ready to start your day? I've been pretty busy. With Easter upon us and lots of kids in the neighborhood, we've done the teddy bear hunt, trying to keep the kids interested during lockdown. We've done the rainbow hunt, and now we're getting ready for the Easter egg or Easter bunny hunt. So I found some images of Easter eggs, which I've printed off and popped into my windows, different shapes and sizes. I've got a few more that I've got to go take outside and put in the windows of the car. And outside the front of our house, we've got a couple of um, uh, marble sculptures. And I won't tell you what they are, just for privacy reasons, but those marble sculptures will be getting some bunny ears and some bunny tails. So the bunny ears, again, they're ones that I've printed off and taped over or laminated up so they won't get too abused in this poor forecast that we have for this Easter Sunday. And I shall be decorating my sculptures outside with bunny ears and, and the, I made the bunny tails out of a pair of my husband's white socks. So uh, I shall be out and decorating those probably tomorrow ready for the kids to come on a Easter bunny hunt. Things you do to keep the kids entertained. I have to say, it's, um, I'm rather grateful that my kids are uh, older and so I don't need to entertain them to try and keep them out of trouble. Um, those poor parents out there with youngsters that are five, six years of age, Oh, 20 past 11, 9.9, you should be sleeping, but I'm grateful to have you here instead. So thank you for staying, hanging around. Um, no, M. Sasha, the reason why you never have socks is because you use the same socks over and over and over again and never dig anything else out of the drawer. Correct? Much like the same T-shirts when you're home, you always use the same four or five T-shirts that get laundered, go back in the drawer, and you pick those same four or five off the top. Same reason. Oh, that's nice. Right, so there's my garlic ready to go. Let's get this onion. So we need a half of an onion. So we'll just slice that right through in the centre. Peel off the papery bit. Take these, this chopping board over here and just take that nasty 
get the root out of the way. I don't want the root on my board. I will chop the top off of the onion as well. Okay, so this needs to be, what's it asking, finely chopped, my half of a red onion. So I cut from the top, or from the bottom to the top of the onion, or sorry, yeah, from the, well, whichever way up, yeah, so from the top to the bottom of the onion, but not quite all the way through, so this is the root end here. I'll give you a big photo so you can see what I'm doing. Big food image, there we go. So I've chopped the stalk off the top along with the, the dried onion skin. I've cut that away as well. And then I've cut through this way, almost to the root at the bottom here. And then I'm gonna cut in this direction, but not quite to the edge here. So what I'm doing is allowing the root end of this onion to hold the onion together until I'm almost done with the chop. All right, so we've cut in two directions now. And we're about to cut into a third direction. So I've cut through this way. I've cut through this way. Again, not quite all the way through to the end of the root here. We save that till the last chop. You see how everything's holding together here as I'm doing the final chop? And that's a good way to dice an onion. I'll just try and keep everything together on my chopping board here. Now my eyes start watering. And as you get towards the end, this is the bit that you just kind of go for a free for all. Ooh, that's a strong onion. And this last little piece of root, I'll throw away. Oh, I'm crying. I'll put that down the way, it's disposed straight away. That's so strong. Get rid of as much of this raw onion as I can. Excuse me for the noise whilst I run the muncher. Okay, that's that out of my eyes. Okay, so, oh, I'm crying. You're not gonna have to get another chopping board out to do this broccoli. I need the space. What I'll do is I'll chop my courgette and my carrots up first, move them onto that chopping board, and then I'll come back and use this one for the rest. So how do I want my courgette? Cut into coins and then halved. Well, to me, it would make sense to halve it first and then cut it into coins. So I'm gonna go through here. So it's right through the center of the courgette. Chop the top off, I don't need that. And then I can line it up like this. So I've got half coins. Pop everything onto the chopping board. Muncher, garbage disposal, waste disposal, um, incinerator. Courgette is um, squash or what else do you call this? It's not squash. You have another name for this. Oh, I'm gonna have to blow my nose. Excuse me, please. Sorry about that, can you hear me again? Wash my hands. My hands all look grimy as well still because I was out in the garden today, pulling weeds, yay. 
So what's the name that you have for courgette in America? Come on, hubby, I'm, I'm relying on you here. It's not squash. You have another name. And I can't remember what it was. Somebody Google it for me. Another name for courgettes. So there's my courgettes. Oh, let me pop that onion into a little hat. Will that one fit? No, it needs a bigger hat. Oh, this hat should fit. Have you seen these wee silicone hats? They're rather clever. A-U-B-E-R-G-I-N-E -E is aubergine. Not aubergine, courgette, sorry. C-O-U-R-G-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. This is a courgette. Aubergine is eggplant, sorry. Courgette, what's the other word for courgette? Now, I'm pretty certain it's not squash. Could be wrong. I have been be wrong on times. Courgette, C-O-U-R-G-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. So what's the other name, the American name for courgette? Or is it courgette, perhaps? I'm pretty certain it's not squash, though. Right, carrots. So it says peel and half your carrot. I am not going to be peeling my carrot. It's a very nice carrot. And there is no need to take that skin off. There's plenty of fiber inside of there. I'm going to be using two carrots because I have a carrot that needs to be eaten. Peeled and cut into diagonal slices. So there is my non-peeled carrot being cut into diagonal slices. Oh, it's still squash. Alrighty, oh, thank you for that. I have now been edumacated. Honestly, I thought you had another name for it, but I was wrong. There's one carrot. Oh, I didn't want to put the end on there. I've got pants outside the kitchen door and he's yelling his bloody head off. He's just been fed. Always wants more. We should call him pants always hungry. Gourd or marrow? No, still not the word. Zucchini. That's right, zucchini. Not squash. Courgette, a zucchini. It, courgette is a zucchini. Zucchini is a courgette. And a eggplant is an aubergine. Aubergine, eggplant. There you go, that's what I was looking for. So squash tends to be um, either butternut or pumpkin, that kind of a seeded um, kind of root vegetable. Right, so that's my carrots are sorted, and now we can use this chopping board to chop my broccoli up. This is a lovely looking broccoli. So I'm gonna recycle this bag. That's going to be my rubbish bin liner when I need another one. Um, now then, broccoli. There is a lot you can do with these stalks. You can make a nice soup out of these stalks. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So I shall just chop these and set them aside for another day. I shall probably put them back inside that bag until I decide what I'm going to do with them. But certainly don't throw them out. Especially um, right now, times of austerity, we need to be very conscious of what we're throwing away. This article needs additional citations for verification, blah, 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 zucchini, da, 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 da. There you go. So English, American, Italian, whatever it is, you're throwing it all in together, a whole bunch of words that are gonna be mixed up. Um, that stalk also, and we'll just trim that 
end off of it, that can go away. I'm going to use that stalk that can go into a broccoli soup as well. So don't throw the stalk away. I could chop this up finely and put it into this dish, but I think I've got more than enough with this head of broccoli to keep Sun and I fed. So this, this needs to be cut into small florets. So we'll just chop the heads off the stalk first. They'll come away. Okay, and that stalk, I'm going to be, these pieces, all going to be going into that soup. So I've got some sweet potato inside my pantry, so I think I'll probably make a sweet potato and broccoli soup. The only problem is when you use those broccoli stalks is they don't keep their nice vibrant colour, and so they tend to make your soups turn kind of a, a brownish colour. Um, so it doesn't particularly look appetising, but it's absolutely full of nutrients. Hopefully if I can get enough squash into there, I can keep a nice orange colour to it. I've got some carrots as well, so that will help I'll put some carrots in there. So there's my broccoli florets. And these are quite, some of these are quite big. I'll just make them a little bit smaller. You want them kind of a, a fork size or mouthful size. So I'll just cut some of these down a little bit. Once this gets to the final part of the cook, you need to be able to move it around the pan and let everything cook through. I kind of like my broccoli al dente. I don't like it when it goes soft and mushy. So it's gonna be a bit of a flash cook. But I do like it to be cooked to a degree. Broccoli again, much like strawberries, is one of those fresh foods that I react quite badly to, so it does need to have some cooking involved to stop my throat from swelling. So again, I've got all those broccoli scraps in the back here. Put them on that camera. So these are all going to be going into soup later on in the week. I might actually do that tomorrow. Perhaps I'll do a live stream. We'll see. That'll be one of my throw it in kind of a streams. Well, I don't really follow a recipe, I just kind of go through my freezer and refrigerator and toss in what needs to be used. Right, so I think we can get on with this rice. So first thing on the recipe is in a small pot, add the rice, which was about three quarters of a cup, um, along with one and a half cups of water, bring to a boil and then turn heat down to a medium low and simmer for 15 to 20 minutes. So let's move this stuff out of the way. So you guys can see what I'm doing. Move these veggies to the side. And move this into the shop for you. Or where shall I go? About there, how's that? So this is gonna squeal, I'm afraid, when I plug it in, as it always does. And see if I can get it working the first time. Oh, yay! that swirl around. Whoops, just knock some of the rice up into the lid here. It's not going to cook it, it's stuck inside the rim of the lid, is it? That was a silly thing to do. Come on. Right. My love for purple mumble extends to infinity. Aww. There, you get an A for using it in a sentence. <laughs> infinity represents something that is boundless or endless or else something that is larger than any real or natural number. That's sweet. I think my love for you is infinity as well, M. Sarge. I think, uh, no, actually I don't think. I know it is. Oh, miss my hubby. Yeah, you get points. Brownie points. How long that's how long will that last? Do we think? 
Should I turn that camera back again? So you can see a better view of me. You love is gross. You're just jealous, fluffy cheeseburger. So there you go, back to me. Oh, look, if I, if I go like this, you see I've got a fight. There, look, you see my halo? <laughs> right, so everything's pretty much ready to go now. Get this rice cooking. Already come to a boil. That's, I love this pot. It's just this um, little induction hob. It's really brilliant. So we'll start the timer on there. And we can talk for 15 minutes whilst that's simmering away. Make sure you keep the lid on. If you take the lid off, then a watch pot does boil if you've got an induction hob. Um, so we're going to let that simmer for 15 minutes. I can turn the heat down on that. How quickly that comes up. Brilliant little gadget I've got here. So we bought this for our caravan, but it's had more use since I've been streaming than it ever did inside the caravan. Hob. Hob. Hob is like a stove top. Sorry. It's the English in me. Or a cooker top. So that's also a hob here. This one's a gas hob. This one is an induction hob. The only thing with induction is that whatever pot you put onto it has to have a magnetic base. Sorry, my trousers have fallen down. It has to have a magnetic base, so I've had to go out and buy a couple of new pots in order to be able to use that in front of you guys. Let me put my extractor on because I can see some steam coming out of there. So it's a hob, H-O-B. Yes, a hub does hold the wheels on, an H-U-B. This is a hob, H-O-B. A hub is a place to gather. That's true. Gosh, we're really getting into the English language, aren't we? Let me turn that down a little bit more. Just needs to lightly simmer, not boil over the top. But this wee induction thing, it comes to uh, a pub, <laughs> yes. Also another place to gather. Um, yeah, the induction just heats up so quickly. Um, uses a fair amount of energy, but it does heat up nice and quickly. It has been very good for this cooking. 12 minutes 53 to go on that. Um, once this rice is done, actually the, the put together for the rest of this dish is really, really quick. So I think it's literally going to be a matter of getting the sauce going inside this pot throwing all the vegetables on top of it, and um, Bob's your uncle. Night bot. So what's the 52 minutes and 13 seconds about? Someone want to explain that to me? Oh good, it's working. Huh? I'm not understanding that. Why did night bot popped up with 52 minutes and 13 seconds? Oh, that's how long I've been streaming. No, I haven't. That's how long I've been on. Oh my God. Okay, so yeah, I can talk a lot of rubbish for a very long time. Mind you, for that first 10 minutes or so, I think I was setting up in the kitchen and you couldn't really see much. Yeah, so since I pushed go live, so probably for 10 minutes I wasn't here. I was here, I was just doing stuff in the background. Okay, so viewer command. This is the leftover, the green curry paste. I guess I could check to make sure that's still good. No, it's not due to expire until 2021, so that's good. So let's give it a wee sniff test. Slide that down. See my clothes pegs? <laughs> These work really well for... If you run out of those little clippy things, do that. Just clip, clip them open and hold your little baggies closed. The sniff test, yeah. Sniff test to see if it's good. And just slide that paste to the bottom of the bag here. And we'll open it up. It's going to have quite a bit of curry paste in it if it is still good. can go in the bin. Oh 
yeah, that's nice. This is going to be a super curry curry one. Is that all right, fluffy cheeseburger? Ooh, yum. So we've got this plus this. So the recipe actually calls for one tablespoon of Thai curry paste. Well, there's a tablespoon here, so I'm probably going to be putting at least double the Thai curry paste inside. Let's have a look at this little container. Oh, isn't that a cute little tub? A little turd tub. And this is um, paper, so I might just throw that inside my fire once I've used that paste. Ten more minutes on that rice. Whoopsies. I will wash my hands again. So the other day I was chopping chilies for a recipe. And I know the danger of chopping chilies. I know what a nightmare it can be. Um, chopped my chilies. We had that recipe that night. Um, we decided that we can, um, oh, we had half of that recipe that night. We decided that we could use the other half of the chili the following night and the other half of the recipe. So I had a double dose of chili. Chop that up, put it in, wash my hands really carefully afterwards, under the nails, real good scrub all around. Um, did dishes that night. So this is a lot of hand washing going on here. Um, and I sat down watching TV and it was quite late into the evening, it was about 9, 9.30 at night and I was watching TV and one of my contact lenses had got stuck to my eyeball. Anybody that wears contacts will know, know the feeling, it's quite annoying. So as I've done many a time before, I just touched my finger onto my contact lens and moved my eye to get my contact lens to unstick from my eyeball. And I must have still had, after all of that, some chili on my fingers, because man, did it burn my eye. And this is on top of the contact lens, not underneath it, it was on top of the contact lens. And so I quickly whipped my contact lens out, but it's too late, it's already underneath my eyelid and it's just gone all around the inside of my eye. Whoa. Let's talk about wake you up at bedtime. Had me gone for sure. So what is I'm going to want to do after this, in a medium sized pot over medium heat, heat one tablespoon of the coconut cream, I guess I can get that on the go, or get that set aside ready to go. What spoon shall I use? That's a nice one, I like my wooden one. This is my tin of coconut cream, it's got one of those lovely pool tabs on. For all of those, those of you that have emergency kits um, for disasters, which I actually have dug into since we've been on lockdown. There's been a few things that I've dug out of my emergency kit that we have in case of earthquakes, which is the most common disaster that we have here in New Zealand, or threat of disaster, should I say. You never know when that's going to happen. It's not like a hurricane or um, tornadoes, which you get to a degree some warning of. Earthquakes just boom, there's an earthquake for you. There you go. Probably when you're least expecting it, just about to doze off, boom, have another earthquake. Um, so we do have our emergency kit set aside. I'm absolutely shocked at the number of Kiwis, which is a, a person that resides in New Zealand. Um, and the number of Kiwis that don't have an earthquake kit and after the disasters of the Christchurch earthquake, and yeah, we do get some hurricane leftovers, but um, the Christchurch earthquake and then the Kaikoura and Seddon earthquakes, um, still Kiwis do not have earthquake kit kits um, or emergency supplies kits. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes, emergency supplies. So important tip. Unless you are certain that all of your cans have these wee pull tabs on them, see those? Get yourself a can opener and put it in your earthquake kit. I'll tell you what, whether or not your cans have got those, get yourself a can opener and put it inside your earthquake kit. Um, lots of people in um, Seddon and Kaikoura were caught out because they couldn't get back into their homes because they were flattened or whatever. And then there you go, very handy to have a P38. I know what a P38 is, one of those little army can openers. 
Um, or if you're old school military, a P98, okay, P38, P98. Um, yeah, they've got all of the, those that did have canned food set aside or those that were given rations by emergency ops that were able to get to them would give them canned goods and they couldn't get into them. So make sure you've got a can opener. Anyway, let me get back to what I'm supposed to be doing. So I'm supposed to have a tablespoon, so a couple of dessert spoonfuls. There you go, we just had an earthquake just now. See, how was that? That's just popped up on my wee device. Let's see where that was. I didn't feel it, but um, I had a pretty decent one in um, Christchurch just last night. So that was a 2.9 earthquake, 15K deep near Wanaka. So that's way south on the South Island. So I didn't feel that one, but um, and there probably won't be many reports. There's not a whole lot of people that live down that far. But definitely the one that happened, what, eight hours ago it was in um, Christchurch. At, uh, it was about 10 to 8 this morning. It was a 4.3. It was 5K deep. Um, so very shallow and quite a, a hefty earthquake. And I just felt a wee shudder in my bed. It was enough to wake me up. I wasn't certain that it was an earthquake. I thought it was the cat I'm actually turning over in a bed and um, not soon after that, she quickly left the bedroom. So that tells me that, yeah, that definitely was an earthquake. So in there, we're going to be put, putting um, our red onions, garlic, and ginger. So I can pop the red onions and garlic into the pan now, whilst we're still waiting for this rice to cook. So red onions are in, we pop the garlic in. And then I've got to grate that ginger, so let me get that on the go. Ginger. Where are you, ginger? There you are. So you need one of these little graters like I have here. Or if you've got a box grater, usually they have a fine sign side on them. That's what you can use. I've got a decent piece of garlic here that I can grate. I'll grate it onto the lid here. And that does grate better when it's frozen. That's awesome. I just want to grate my fingers is the only thing. How much does it say I want? One tablespoon. I might put a little bit more than one tablespoon in because I like ginger. Oops, nearly had a bit of nail with it as well. Though. Well, that grates. That's great. Just add a little bit more, I think. Definitely the way to do this is break it from frozen. That's just worked out brilliantly. So once again, it said one tablespoon. I think I've probably got about half a tablespoon there. So. And I really like garlic, uh, really like ginger. And there's a tablespoon worth there. And so in goes the skin of the garlic as well. That does you no harm, it's additional fiber, so it certainly is not going to hurt you. Nothing but goodness. Take some hands off. I'll pop this garlic back into it, sorry, the ginger, sorry, back into its little tub and back into the freezer. I need to wipe my bench top down. That rice must be getting close to being ready to take off the heat. Yeah, another 35 seconds and that'll be good. 
this panel. So not much in the way of dishes today actually. We've got what, a couple of saucepans and a couple of chopping boards plus the serving dishes, so that's very good. Right. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And the timer will beep. Countertop, bench top. Yes, I mean garlic. I uh, mean, mean ginger, not garlic. And stop that. So we'll take this rice off the heat. You know what? I'm not happy that that's cooked very well. I'm going to cook that for a wee while longer. I will give that another five minutes. I'm not happy that's done at all. I'll give it another five minutes. Countertop, bench tops. <laughs> Actually, I don't know what it is I call it now, if it's counter or bench. This is what happens when you've Term, countertop, when a girl is face down on a counter... Oh, no, I don't want him to know that. Okay, yeah, we'll get rid of that, thank you. No, 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 I don't need to know that. Um, a bench top or count countertop? Um, I can't remember what, which it was I used from my English days and which I've used from my American days and what it is now I'm a Kiwi. It's a bit like backsplash and splash back. I can never remember which one it was that I used to say. Any who's doesn't matter, it's the same thing as far as I'm concerned. I know what it is that I mean. Look at that. So that's the garlic, the red onion, coconut cream, and the ginger. Lots of ginger. That bit of garlic's a bit big. So a bit of onion is a bit big. So that's what's going to go on after this rice is cooked. And I'm not pleased with how that's cooking at all. I don't want to do it, turn it up because it just boils over. It says 15 to 20 minutes here. Yeah, generally brown rice I've found takes about 40 minutes to cook. So, yeah. Certainly don't want it to be um, undercooked. That would not be nice. Yeah, I think we should ban Nightbot. I don't want to hear that. I don't know why that came up in there at all. It's not at all acceptable. Yep, so I'm hoping that my IT guys can sort that Nightbot error out. Completely unacceptable not allowed on my live stream at all. Can you guys hear that music in the background? It's quite noisy here in the kitchen with the extractor on. You're on trick. Good to hear it. Thank you. Get a couple of serving dishes out. You know, if ever, it's just my, my favourite thing about this kitchen. When I moved into this house, or when we came and looked at this house, um, First things first, it's like, oh, I love that my oven is, well, they call it eye level, a wall mounted oven. I love my wall mounted oven. I wish it was a double one, but it's okay. The fact is, I have trouble bending down. If my back goes out, there is no bending down going on inside my kitchen. So I struggle to get anything in or out of an oven that's low down. So hence, when my back's gone out, there's no bit cookies being baked in this household because I can't bend at all. Um, but the second thing that sold me on this house was this. Look at all these lovely drawers. Aren't they awesome? Nice big deep drawer. This is where I keep all of my saucepans. Um, the one below it, I don't go into it very often. Again, it's that low angle that I can't get to very well. My back's bad. So that has like the, the posh serving dishes for when we have guests come around. So I don't often go into there. But, you know, lots of drawers. I've got my knives in here. I've got my um, bench top heat protections in here. Um, spices and seasonings for, for sweet dishes in there, like vanilla and um, uh, ginger, <laughs> powdered ginger, powdered cinnamon, all that good stuff. 
Um, so I've got lots of drawers. And the, the best thing about drawers is you can get to the very back. Imagine, I mean, if you look into one of my covers, this one's quite a good one, because it's got a lazy Susan in it, so everything does rotate around. But generally, with a cupboard, whatever's at the back here, you just don't ever see it. You don't get to it. But when you've got a drawer, you can get right to the very back of that drawer and, and be able to access anything that, is that you need. So I do wish they had slot, soft closed drawers, but ho-hum, you can't have everything you dream of, can you? Exhaust fan extractor, yes, that's what this thing is. I can turn that down a little bit now. Not quite so noisy since we're not putting quite so much steam off. Um, yeah, so that's an extractor or exhaust fan or extractor hood. Um, yeah, so I love my, I love gas. I love cooking with gas, apart from when the gas bottle goes out. We don't have mains gas here in the South Island um, of New Zealand. It all comes from gas bottles. Right, let's just check this rice and see if it's good to go. See if we're cooked enough. Not quite. You know what? I'm not going to shift this. And cook it on the stove. On the hob. I'll finish that off on there. And we'll get on with cooking this instead. Okay. So, cup of tea. Hob burner, yep. Hob tends to be, um, I think burner in American tends to be the, the individual ring. So you would call, what do you call your hob? Your stove. So you call it a stove. Oh, and this is boiling over. Turn that down. No, you just need to simmer, please. Just sit there and simmer nicely. Stop causing aggro. There you go. Maybe a little bit more than that. I do like gas, but um, I don't like cleaning my hob so much because it's so finickety. There's so many bits and pieces. Right, so where were we? Let's get back into this. Let's get on with the cooking. Heat one tablespoon of the coconut cream, add the red onions, garlic and ginger and fry for two to three minutes. Turn the heat up a little bit. Already this smells yum. Yummy ginger. Should we move you back so you can see what's going on inside the big food image. There we go, big food. As that coconut milk is heating up, it's becoming a little bit more liquefied. So that's helping the mixture fry off. Big food, close up, that's right. So I've got my cameras named um, Room View, that's this one here with me in it. And this is Big Food, that's what that camera is called. Okay, you've got to make it simple for us simple folk. So I'm not overly keen on coconut milk, but I found when I first started going down the vegan path and I saw so many recipes called for coconut milk, I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. But, um, yeah, you tend to lose the flavour if you cook it with other things. You don't really necessarily taste the coconut milk quite so much. Add the, you know, five for two, three minutes. Add the green Thai curry paste. So that is all going in here. Let me get that all out. Heat down a little bit. It's a little bit of curry paste up that corner. Don't want it to go to waste. 
So that's that curry paste. So this is what I had left over from my recipe. I did a wee while ago. And then I've got the rest of this curry paste, which came with a food box. Oh, thank you for the host 9.9, .9. much appreciated. So we've got green Thai curry paste in here. So those that have just joined us, we are making a vegan green Thai curry or lockdown vegan green Thai curry. So in the pot here, we have got uh, garlic, onion, ginger, a little bit of coconut cream and um, some green Thai, thai curry paste. I've actually got probably twice as much of the green Thai curry paste as the recipe calls for, but oh well. If you want to see the recipe that I'm making, um, exclamation mark recipe and an image of the recipe will pop up so you can print that off. It does smell absolutely delicious, delicious. So we're gonna add a little bit more of this coconut cream as per the recipe. So I'm using a dessert spoon, so roughly two dessert spoons is about a tablespoon. So we've now got two tablespoons of the coconut cream in there. We'll stir that through. We'll cook it for another one or two minutes. So it's gradually reducing the, um, the texture of these onions and softening them up. not really into cooking curries. I've not really made that many in my lifetime. But I'm um, getting better at it. Let's have a peek and see how that rice is doing. That's cooking away ricely. for a few more seconds and then we'll add the rest of the coconut cream to this and the cafe lime. So I've got a pot of rice over here over my right shoulder and uh, that's brown rice so that's um, been cooking now for about 20 minutes or so. So read the directions that you have on your packet and follow those. One tablespoon is three teaspoons, or two dessert spoons is one tablespoon. So we'll add the rest of the coconut cream now. Make sure you scrape your containers out. Let's not leave anything to waste here. goes our cafe lime leaf as well. Stir that through. Beautiful. Okay, so now we add the rest of our vegetables. So it, the recipe calls for one carrot. I actually have two carrots here. I had one inside my refrigerator that I wanted to use up. One courgette or zucchini, you may call it. Really, any vegetables that you have inside your pantry will be just fine. And then I've also got one head of broccoli, which will be going in. If it doesn't escape off the chopping board. And the leftover stalk that I have from this broccoli is going to be going into making a soup later on. This week, over the weekend. Just gently stir that through. And we're going to pop the lid on and let it cook for a short while just to soften these vegetables. So a teaspoon is five mils, a tablespoon is 15 mils, and a dessert spoon is seven and a half mils, just approximately. Okay, I'm just gonna 
pop the lid on there. And we shall let that cook for me for about five to seven minutes on medium heat. So start that. We'll let that cook. And we're just about there now. Let's cut my lime up. So I have already washed this. I'm just going to cut it into half because once again this meal will probably do my son and I for um what's all this Jim 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 Jim. Oh hi Jim, sorry. Hi Jim, thanks for joining us. I'm trying to figure out where the Jim comes along because that's another family member's name, is a Jim. Oh, and I didn't put my edamames in. I'm gonna get those in. Edamame beans. I've not had those before, but I've tasted them straight out of the packet and they are very, very nice. Give them a wee stir. They look a little bit like a broad bean, don't they? But they don't taste like it. Oh, they're lovely colours in there. Very, very healthy. Right, I'm going to have to pop off shot and blow my nose once again. My apologies. back online again. Can I get a thumbs up? Can you hear me? Let's check this rice. Oh, that looks better. I think I can just sit and steam now. We're good to go. There's the rice. These veggies are just finishing off. I've got a couple of dishes here. Get myself a little bit of coriander. Once again, it's just me that enjoys the coriander with the dish, so I won't chop up too much. One sprig will do me for tonight. And the rest goes back into the fridge. So it stays nice and fresh. We made a... Um, apple pie yesterday. A friend gave us a, a whole bag of apples from her garden. Absolutely delicious apple pie with some nice homemade custard. Well, homemade from a packet mix. Custard powder. Just enough coriander for me. Just because I'm aware that there's some coconut milk at the bottom of that tin, and I don't want that to go to waste, so I'm just going to add a little bit of boiling water to that. Swirl it around inside there. And I'll pop that into my saucepan as well. See that? Don't want that to go to waste, so that I can go in as well. So always remember if you're recycling your cans, which I hope everybody is, and your glass bottles. Um, rinse them out before you put them out into the rubbish or the trash and that helps um, reduce the number of insects that come hunting around to gather something. Almost ready. Let's give this a wee stir. 
Mm, look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? And there's the timer now going off on that. So the last few bits and pieces I need to add is a tablespoon of rice vinegar. The tablespoon measure out. I don't have rice vinegar, so once again, I'm going to be using the good old white vinegar, which I hope will be just the same. One tablespoon of rice vinegar, the white vinegar I'm using, a tablespoon of soy sauce. I'm gonna have to swap hands with this because for some reason I cannot hold that soy sauce bottle with a wide grip in my left hand. So swap hands, a tablespoon of soy sauce, and a tablespoon of brown sugar or maple syrup. Now I have some maple syrup left over for another food bag recipe that we had, so I shall pop that straight in. And that'll add a lovely sweetness. Bin, rubbish, trash. It's like learning three languages, isn't it? A few last little drips off of there. We'll stir those flavours through. Right, number one, son. I think we're just about ready there for taste time. If you want to meander in, it's taste test time. Just look at those colours. Don't they look yum? Nice and fresh greens and oranges. The more colour you can get into your veg, the better it is for you. Excuse me, now I've got hiccups. Look, see my little rubbery thing I can pop my lime into? Perfect for the fridge. And that will keep it nice and fresh till I need to use it again. Put these leftover broccoli pieces back into the fridge. I'm ready for making soup. And here comes number one son, ready oh, so for good. taste test. Does it smell good? It smells really good. Oh, good. It smells like green Thai curry. Maybe you'll actually enjoy a meal for a change. Oh. You ungrateful little. <laughs> right, let's put some rice in your bowl. Should do that over here. Turn this off now. Or do you want your rice stirred through? Probably better stirred through, right? I like it stirred through. Yeah, because otherwise it's not then, over it. Yeah, then it all gets the flavour, doesn't it? I don't get those crazy people that get a spoon of, uh, of rice and they dip it in the curry. Just get that out. So the recipe calls for this to be the um, curry to be served over the rice, but Sun and I have made the executive decision that we don't follow the recipe, since I haven't done for the rest of the cook. And we're just exactly. going to dump it in. When do I ever follow the recipe, Sam? <laughs> I try to make a really it. nice recipe and makes it healthy. Well, you're doing a very good job there. Which is you come in and do the final stir at the end of it and think that, yep, that I did the cook today. I slaved over a stove for this. <laughs> yeah, in your dreams. So we'll turn that off. That's a bit better. You can hear me now. And get that coiled up, ready to put away. Does that look green curry, green Thai curry enough for you? Looks green. You're already starting to comp complain, aren't you? Oh, no. <laughs> <coughs> oh, cool. That's not funny. I shouldn't laugh at that. Right. How hungry are you, Sam? Relatively hungry. Let's see, pull the rice off of it. I was going to check it in there. No, no, I can sit over there. Okay. Sweet, no broccoli. No, you're having broccoli too. Darn it, and courgettes. 
Nah. Thank you, thank you. Grab yourself um, probably a spoon oh, out. Yeah, I yeah. definitely one. There's a little bit more liquid in here than there should be because um, That's all right. I put more in. More sauce is better. Now, um, there's some lime there. Give it a squirt of lime. I'm just stick this coriander into mine. Squirt of lime? Squirt of lime. Now I've got another half a lime, so I use the whole. It's rather hard to squirt, isn't it? Yeah, it just kind of doesn't. Not much of a squirty lime. Get your thumb into it. There is juice in there, it's just really hard to get it to release. Yeah. I think I've got like all of three drips out of yeah. mine. Oh well, it'll not, make not quite a ripe lime yet. It'll make the munchies smell nice. Yeah. Love the smell of lime. We'll pop this back on the pot. Lime and betters. Ooh. Right. Let's have a. Let's change it to a room view. Oh look, I've lost my head. I need to come. Over Where'd there. she go? Take I need to duck down, there we go. Yeah, come sit on the stool, sir. Yeah. Right. So here we have our vegan green Thai curry. I was going to put some soy in with, with this as well, but um, I didn't have any firm soy, so. I love those edamames. Oh, that's a... That's got some kick to it. It's got some double the dose of curry in it for sure. Oh yeah. This is going to get the nose running even more. The cat screaming the cat's, in the other room. Cat screaming again. It needs the lime. It does. So I've got some lemon juice here. And I also have some lemons there. Mm. I'll do the same. It's just a citric element that it's missing. Yeah. Do you want some? Yep. Do you want some lemon zest in as well? No, nah, just, just the lemon juice. Please. I won't put too much in. If you want more, you can add more. Thank you. I, I think I think because our uh, our lime wasn't particularly juicy, it's wasn't very it's ripe. Wasn't very ripe. Yeah, it definitely misses that zing. So I had a bottle of lemon juice there. Mm -hmm. It's better with that. Does it need any salt and pepper? It probably should. Bit of it salt, shouldn't. I think. You think so? Maybe a bit of salt. Just to bring it out more. You can add salt to yours if you want. I'm not going to put any in mine. Right, so we're, we'll let you put your salt on, then you can give the score. I like the beans because they give a little pop. Mmm. I'm definitely buying some of marmots again. I've never actually seen them in the supermarket. I don't know where I'd find them. I think if they were dried and had like a, a savory peanut coating stuff on it. Do you know the, the savory peanut coming? Saute. Oh no, like um, you go to a bar and they're covered in like a crust. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like a, like a deep fried batter thing on them. Yeah, these beans with that would be amazing. Right, so score is what they're wanting. What is hot? Sure. Very hot. It's so, M. Sarge, when you come home, hot. I'll definitely make this again. Because I'm enjoying this. Spicy uh, hot, yes. Yeah, I'd say it's a bit hotter than jalapenos. But remember, we've got double the amount of um, Thai green paste in there. Ooh, Chili paste. Salt, mate. Better with salt? Yeah. And you, you can taste the citrus. The score. I'd say mm, all over my face. You see what I mean with the salt? Mmm. Mmm. It the needs to taste the citrus with the mm. salt. I'm thinking it's an eight. I love green Thai curry. 
It but didn't quite need both yeah. of that, both of those doses, did it? No. I think, I think if we'd only had the one dose or one and a half doses instead of the double shot that we ended up giving it just because I wanted to use a pack it up. It, it instantly loses points for broccoli for me. But Here we go. It, <laughs> there's certain vegetables I hate. Broccoli. Uh, what vegetables do you like, Curtis? Let's try listing those. Corn, these beans, don't mind courgettes, don't mind cucumber. I like carrot, I like mushroom depending on how it's done. Should I keep going? <laughs> yeah. Come on, give us a score. Um, I think it's a solid eight. Um, Do you think it would have been higher if we hadn't have had so much curry paste in it? I think it would be higher if it had chicken in it. It's missing that meaty texture. So if I'd put um, like the tofu in? Maybe like a really firm tofu Yeah. would be nice. Like a baked tofu? Yeah. I think that'd be really good. And there's something a bit weird with the curry. Like, it doesn't quite taste like green Thai curry. But in, in like, um, like restaurant green Thai curry. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. There's something a bit different to it. No, I don't normally order, order green Thai curry in restaurants. So. Oh, okay. Anyway. It's good, though. He gave it an eight. These aren't lima beans. Yeah, they're weird beans. They're uh, nice. Edamames. E-D-A-M-A-M-E. Is that right? Read that off there. You've got... Read those beans. I don't know how well you can see that bean. So, Sun gave it an eight. I'd give it a nine. I enjoy it. Um, he's looking for more of a meaty texture in there. So he could, if you put chicken in or if you put a tofu or something in there, or even pork actually would probably be nice mm, in here. Pork would be good. Um, I'm actually not missing the meat. So that's why I give it a nine. Eat a mummy bean. <laughs> Spell that out. I don't know if, um, how well it's going to come out. Edamame. Can you just spell it out? Um, E-D-A-M-A-M-E. Edamame. Edamames. Mm, jackfruit is too, it yeah. falls to bits. Yeah, jackfruit doesn't, it's got no meatiness to it. So jackfruit works really well if you want to, like a shredded meat recipe. But um, this, this actually, if you wanted to, something to be firm, there you go, edamame. If you wanted something to be firm, a, a good firm meat texture, then jackfruit won't give you that. Jack. So either a good, nice, firm tofu mm. that perhaps you've baked ahead of time um, or actually using a meat. So either a chicken or, I wouldn't think beef would be particularly nice in this. Yeah, no, not beef. But, yeah, but anyway, white meat. number one son scores it an eight. I score it a nine. I think all in all, this is a definite do it again. I like We've got to find where those, cool. those edamames, yeah, they're, they're gorgeous, they're aren't nice, they? Nice, nice um, find. No, so that's something. Edamame beans are something that I could just take out of the fridge and just eat raw. I don't know if I could eat them raw, but with some kind of seasoning on them, mm. I would definitely eat them. So there we go. That was our green Thai curry for tonight. Thank you. Um, number one son thinks he's going to slouch off, but I want him to hang around because I think we should have a wee raid. So let me just see if I can find out if everybody can pl please just bear with whilst I'm still trying to figure out how to do this. Now, for starters, I don't have my little thing doodah up there. Look, I guess I can fit that one there. Number one son gets to wash dishes. Okay, so do I just type in, go at that one? Um, you've, got a, you've got a um, bookmark of it already. Okay, so I'll bring that up. Let's see who it is that we've got cooking. 